from a 30 pound raspberry pi that's crazy done next one straight on next it's one. good isn't it boom Okay, so guys, in quarantine, I got a little bit bored, so yeah, I decided to build this. Now, this is a Raspberry Pi with some custom software on it that allows you to stream all of your music to it. Now, the inspiration for this was I wanted to be able to stream music to the passive speakers that are in my gym. <laughs> now, there's usually three parts to a generic speaker system. The first part, the actual speaker itself, these ones are passive speakers, which means they need a separate amplifier to drive them. Now, the amplifier is the second part of the speaker system. What's the third, you're probably thinking? Well, the third is what's called a streamer. Now, that's usually nine times out of 10, your computer or your mobile phone for example, streaming over Bluetooth. But now you can actually pick up a Raspberry Pi, put custom software on this, stick it behind your speakers and turn your old speakers into some new, modern, fresh, Wi-Fi or Ethernet connected streaming speakers. Now, I'm really excited because you guys are going to learn something today. So, unlike those passive speakers that are in my garage, these are my favourite speakers, the Kef LS50 Wireless. Now, these are deemed as active speakers because in this cabinet, they have the actual speaker itself and the amplifier that drives the speaker. But these KEFs take it one step further, they actually have the streamer built into them as well. So you actually connect via Wi-Fi or Ethernet to these and then you can come over to a device like a phone for example and launch Spotify Connect and the speaker appears there so you can cast your music straight to it. Now what we're building here is the streaming portion of this process. So let's say you've got some passive speakers and you want to have that functionality. That's what we're doing. Now this is really, really clever. So you can output via the 3.5 millimeter jack on this Pi. But the DAC in here, the digital to analog conversion of the audio is rubbish because these things are super, super cheap. That's where, well, we take advantage of these USB ports on here by plugging in an external DAC. Now this is one that we've raved about on TechFlow before, the Cyrus sound key. Go ahead and plug that straight in there. And now the digital signal is going from this into our external DAC, which is gonna give us great sound quality. And you can put whatever DAC you would like into here, as long as it supports USB, and off you go. This is serious, serious gear for unserious cash. Now, because these Raspberry Pis are so popular, people make these cases for them. So here's one I prepared earlier with my Raspberry Pi. This is my gym speakers, as you can see. We have the Cyrus sound key, our DAC, plugged in USB, sellotape to the side or sticky tape to the side, three and a half millimeter output, to our stereo system. Now in theory, you could have loads of these stacked on top of each other for a whole multi-room experience with ceiling speakers. That would be super, super cool. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually buy what's called a DAC hat, which is a DAC, a digital to analog converter that actually sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do this, dial in the settings to a cheap Raspberry Pi to make all of this happen. And then after that, we're gonna do some tests to make sure this thing sounds cut, good. Cut, cut, cut. Dude, that was a good take. I know, but we need to thank our sponsor. What sponsor? F-Secure, are you? F-Secure? Yeah. No, I think we need to call an emergency meeting. I've got no idea about this. Right. Right. Okay, what's all this about F-Secure then? Okay, so F-Secure is basically this cyber security provider from Finland, all right? right. And they've got this brand new thing called ID protection, which basically secures all your data and stops sort of data theft online. One problem, that sounds really complicated. That's where you're wrong. Because it's actually the world's easiest to use password manager with personal data management. Well, you see the thing is there's loads of password managers out there, so what makes it different? Well, this one can actually detect when some of your information has been leaked online and it'll let you know if something has actually happened. Well, that's pretty mental because I think it was literally last year that happened to TechFlow. We yeah. lost access to the channel for about two weeks. Literally, and that could have stopped it. So is this the app on the computer? Yeah, exactly, it's super simple. You literally just add what you want to add. So I've got my business bank account here for online payments and all that kind of stuff. I've got TechFlow's Instagram, so you know, don't have to faff about trying to put the login okay. details in. It's all literally on there. And the best part about it is, at least for me, the handiest part is it just syncs across all devices. So like, you have your phone, I can have my phone, a laptop, and they're all there, all the passwords on every device. So we don't have to keep sending them to each other and all that kind of stuff. So when we get new devices for TechFlow, we just log into F-Secure and all the passwords Exactly, we get a new phone to test, the password's there, we don't have to faff around trying to figure out what they are and remember what they are. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't yeah. it? Even better though. What, go on then. Well, we've actually got a five day free trial link in the description, so anyone who wants to click on that automatically gets a five day free trial. Five days. Exactly, five days free. 
And on top of that, I've got a giveaway on Instagram. Well, on our Instagram? Yeah, the Tech Flow Picks one. Basically, it gives five people the chance to win a one-year subscription to ID Protection. So not only are they sponsoring the video, yep. they're actually giving us some stuff to give away. Exactly. On our Instagram. Yep. That is really, really cool. It is cool. very cool. The only question is, which I've been pondering on, is how are we going to get all this information across to the people watching this video without just making it really boring? Well, I've actually had, while she's been you know, talking about mm. it, three cameras rolling, one there, one there, and oh. one there. So, I mean, I think that does a pretty good job, right? Yeah, I didn't notice them, actually. So you lot should definitely get on the Instagram giveaway because why not? But for now, let's get this Pi running the software we want it to run. So you're going to want to, on your computer, go to the Raspberry Pi website, click on Downloads, and download the Raspberry Pi Imager for whatever OS you're on. Once the software is all downloaded, go ahead and open it, and what we're going to do is choose an operating system. We're going to choose the Raspberry Pi OS. And now, this is where you need to take your micro SD card and stick it into your computer. And then once you've done that, you can click Choose SD Card and choose the SD card that you've just put in your computer and click Write. This is now putting the software on to that SD card for the Raspberry Pi. Now once that process is all completed, you're going to take your SD card and you're going to stick it into your Raspberry Pi. Now I don't want this next bit to deter any of you because this, when we're done with it, is going to live by itself, USB powered, behind the speaker system and simply play Spotify. But for now, to configure it, we're going to need a computer monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. So if everything worked out, now you should have this screen on on your monitor. This is the Raspberry Pi homepage, if you like. Well, I can see in the top corner that the Wi-Fi is connected up there, so we're pretty much ready to go. Obviously, you can use Ethernet if you would like. What you're gonna need to do, though, is on this Pi, open up a terminal window. Now, we're gonna paste quite a few commands into this terminal window, and I'm gonna have them all in the description of this video, so you can load this video up on your Raspberry Pi and copy and paste everything. Okay, so here is our first command, gonna hit return there, and then simply wait for the Raspberry Pi to do its thing, and now we've got the green text, which means we can put another command in. And then essentially, once you hit return on this command, it's gonna go ahead and install the RAS Spotify client to the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it's doing its thing now. All we need to do is wait. So now we can pick up our phone or whatever it might be that's using Spotify, maybe you're on the desktop app, and then you can click on the player right here and then click on the available devices, give it a scroll down, and as you can see, we've got RAS Spotify there, Raspberry Pi. Now if you click that, it's gonna stream the audio straight to the Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. But we wanna change some settings and dial this in a little bit more. So back to the Pi. So open up another terminal window in your Pi and type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash RAS Spotify. So there's a few options in here that we're definitely going to want to change. The first being the name of the device. Let's say you've got a few of these around the house. So we're going to go down here to device name and I am going to call this test streamer. So this hashtag, because we've changed the device name, we're going to remove the hashtag there, now it's gone white. The second thing we're gonna wanna change is the bit rate. So we've got 96, 160, or 320. The higher the bit rate, the better the quality. So we're gonna wanna change this from 160 to 320 kbps, and same thing again, go and get rid of that hashtag at the start. Now you wanna go ahead and save all of these changes and exit this by hitting Control X and then clicking Y. And then enter to write over the previous file. And now all of our settings are changed. Now because we've changed all of these settings, we're gonna to wanna to run a restart command to restart the Spotify client on the Raspberry Pi. And now if we go back to our phone, we can make sure that these changes did save. I've given it about 15 seconds to restart the service on the Pi. So if I click on the streaming, as you can see, we now have test streamer. And if we click that, it's connected and we are connected to our test streamer or our Spotify Connect Raspberry Pi streamer. There we go. So we're back in the kitchen and I've set the speakers to auxiliary, which means we can go ahead and plug in some RCA cables or a 3.5 mil into the back of them. Goes into the sound key, then into the Pi, which has got our software on it. I've given it USB power. So now if we go to our phone, I've renamed this studio speakers because this is going to live out in my studio. As you can see, it's playing, but we've got no audio. That's because the speakers are muted. If we unmute them, there we have our audio and it works just like that. 
from a 30 pound raspberry pie. That's crazy. Done, next one. Straight on. Next it's one. good, isn't it? Boom, done. <laughs> So then practically, how am I going to be using this in my life? This is my use case for this. So we've got the Pi here in my studio with the sound key. Like I mentioned guys, if you don't want to buy an external DAC, you can just make use of that 3.5 mil on the side there. And you can actually do HDMI out as well, if that's your thing. But we're gonna go ahead and plug into my amplifier here in the garage, pick up our phone right here. And as you can see, we've got studio speakers. So we start streaming to them like that. And then we go ahead and turn up the volume. Like with all of the speakers in this room and the subwoofer that's down there, it sounds great in here, like really, really good. I couldn't be happier and it's all activated via my phone. I come and start a gym session and get my phone out, stream to the speakers. They're always on, waiting, ready, available. But there you guys go, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, the comment section is the place. My name's been Alex, this has been TechBlow and we'll see you in the next one. Adios. Oh, <laughs> right, where's the old raspberry pie? The other blood's going to my head. <laughs> right, <laughs> right no, seriously. Where's the pie? <laughs> oh, God, help. Oh.